I want to thank you again for being here and meeting with us. And my question is about the documentary, Sing Your Song. Um, I believe your daughter, Gina Belafonte, was very much involved in creating this documentary. And in an interview during the Sundance Film Festival, she said it was very important to her that she preserve your legacy and the legacy of those who worked so closely with you uh, during the civil rights movement. And I was just wondering if you felt a sense of responsibility to share with the world the stories of your peers and their contributions to the black movement and other humanitarian um, causes? I guess it was a responsibility, but I never saw it as a responsibility. I really didn't. Still don't. I saw it as a way of life. I just don't know how to do it any other way. Nobody has ever had as much fun with a career than I've had. I really mean that. I mean, I woke up one day and I sang a little song that came from a little village in the mountains of Jamaica. Deo, Deo. And I woke up one day and the whole world is singing that song. And I walked out and said, my God, everybody's singing my song. Now what do I do? Now what do I say? What do I do with this audience that looks upon me so favorably? And all I could think about was how to lead them to the things that gave me joy, the joy of diversity, the joy, the joy of each other. And I'm not, you know, I'm, not, I'm not religious, so let's not make any great statements about my spirituality. You know, it, my spirituality exists, but I service that in a whole other way than, than what the norm would, would have you think. And uh, I just think that uh, it wasn't a responsibility. It was a way of life. And the fact that others see it, as, I mean, if you're responsible for something, it means you have to make an effort to go out and do it. I, it's no effort for me. I didn't lose anything. As a matter of fact, I gained so much, it was almost vulgar. I once said to a friend of mine in Beverly Hills, who had a big house, black guy, and uh, looked at me and said, oh man, you gave up so much. You sacrificed so much for us, brother. I mean, you really did. You just stepped to the plate and look what happened. And I looked around the room for whom else he could have been talking to because you, what happened? What happened? Well, man, you know, your career took a hit. You didn't this, you didn't. I said, my career took a hit. You wake up every morning and talk to your agent, and you're always on the same subject. How well did you do at the box office? I wake up every morning, I talk to Nelson Mandela, and we talk about <laughs> who, who got shafted here, who got something to hang on to, who got a reward that's not equatable. I mean, and I didn't go look for Mr. Mandela. I did write him when he was in prison, but I felt that was the thing I needed to do. And to get him out of prison became just part of what my daily menu was, it was dealing with injustice. Later on, a thing happened I never expected. I never thought he'd come out of prison. I never thought I'd see him. But then I was rewarded with that moment. I looked at it and I said, what a way to spend your life, man. You're hugging, you're hugging Madiba. And he's out here making noise and Make another, wow, what a way to go. And somebody saying, I, I, I weep for you? Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we need water, but so give us all you got. But uh-uh, somebody's not seeing this in the, in, in, in the proper context. Somebody's not seeing this in the way it should be perceived. I'm having, I'm having fun. <laughs> I'm having fun watching the enemy retreat, bloodlessly. <laughs>